the Shark Deck. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. William and Kate may be heading to Singapore this year. The third annual Earthshot Prize Awards will be held in Singapore on November 7th. William said, The Earthshot Prize is all about showing the world the solutions to some of the biggest environmental challenges we face are out there. After two years of discovering impactful ideas and innovations, I am delighted that the Earthshot Prize is travelling to Singapore, where the groundbreaking solutions of our 2023 finalists will be celebrated. One wonders what the carbon footprint of travelling from London to Singapore is, but that's a question for another day. Meanwhile, Charles may be heading to Kenya, which is of extra interest because it was in Kenya when Elizabeth learned her father, King George VI, had died and she was now queen. You may recall the dramatisation in The Crown, which saw young Elizabeth staying in a treehouse at a game reserve, and it has been correctly observed that she went up the ladder a princess and came down a queen. The Mail on Sunday reports that Charles is due to visit the country as soon as this year. An insider said, It will be a poignant moment. Inevitably, it will be a reminder of his young mother at the start of her reign. Now he is at the start of his, but he has the advantage of experience too. It will also be an important marker for his reign that will underline how importantly he views the Commonwealth. Eliza Reid is the First Lady of Iceland and told people what it was like to attend the coronation of King Charles. We were at the funeral of Queen Elizabeth as well. They were the same, but also different. There was a similar pattern of the ceremony, but the funeral was looking back, reflecting and paying respects. The coronation was about celebration and looking forward. There was a lot more colour in the Abbey. They seat the heads of states by doing the Commonwealth first and then in alphabetical order. We were seated in the same row as Ireland and Israel. At the funeral, we were at the other side of the aisle, and the story in Iceland was that we were two rows behind the Bidens, but it's only because it's alphabetical order. I think it's a good system, or else there would be some bruised egos. We couldn't see very much, but sound was exquisite. It's such an old building, and the acoustics were wonderful, which makes you think, I hope I don't cough or sneeze. So even though we couldn't see what was going on, the music was outstanding, and I remember that also from the funeral. It's an ancient ceremony. It's been going on for centuries, and that is important for Britain and the realm to maintain that. Given the constraints of what it had to be, they tried to incorporate slightly more modern elements. It was a very religious ceremony, and I think a lot of people were surprised by that. I think I was because I didn't know what to expect. Within those limited confines, I think they try to showcase other dimensions, but it's a very traditional ceremony, and the fact that it still exists is tradition, because other monarchies in Europe don't have these big coronations. It makes a lot of money, and it brings in a lot of money. I grew up in Canada, so the Queen was head of state, so I'm very used to the concept. We went to Buckingham Palace the night before for a reception. We got to talk to the Princess of Wales for a little bit. She is such a pro. You can see these people kind of freeze up around her, and she automatically goes into, thanks for coming, I'm so glad you're here. I almost didn't want to talk to her for too long, because I know she has got to get to everybody. Palace Entry, we'll be right back. I'm Nina Hobson, ex-police detective from the UK. I've worked on every crime mentionable, from murder to kidnap to stalking to fraud. When I left the force, I launched my own investigations firm that soon became a global operation. I'm also a single mother of two, to two members of my team, my son Harrison and daughter Amy. Every week, we'll be getting first-hand accounts from psychological experts, operatives, former criminals, actual victims of the crimes that we investigate, and of course, my very own flesh and blood. From Storic Media, you're listening to Codename Siren, a true crime podcast, available on YouTube and all major podcast platforms. Royal historian Dr. Tessa Dunlop says Charles shouldn't have to move into Buckingham Palace if he's happy where he is, she told the Mirror. After divorce and the death of a loved one, apparently the most stressful thing you can do is move house. Our king has been through the first two. Why is it even a question that he might have to endure the third? Charles has made it clear that he does not want to swap his official London residence, Clarence House, for enormous impractical Buckingham Palace. Nor should we entertain the idea of the king moving irrespective of the romantic associations attached to the world's most famous address. If we want a more modern, functional royal family, we can't expect a 74-year-old granddad king to upsize from his home of 20 years into a 775-room palace. And here's a bit of a shocker. Guess who is the most popular royal in the United States? No, it's not Meghan. It's not Kate either. It's Harry. 
Research done by Bonus Finder, who seemed to be a user-driven and independent casino review portal per a Google search, said their research shows Harry to be number one with 33.8% of the votes. 36 individual states chose Harry as their favourite royal. The second most popular is Kate, Princess of Wales, with 29.6% of the votes. And we suspect if some others run a survey, she will come out on top, as she is, after all, wonderful, who would look stunning in a burlap sack, can walk gracefully in three-inch hills in the snow, and can also play the piano. Prince William is third with 22%, Meghan fourth with 18.6%. Rounding up the top ten, the King, Princess Anne, Camilla, Beatrice edging out Eugenie, and Prince Edward at tenth. No love for Sophie Wessex. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalacentric at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, or your app of choice. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott's Palace Intrigue and Good Times. <laughs>